Hi, welcome to lab. Today we're going to walk through the models of the reproductive system. You can follow along on your lab guide that's located in the Connect system. We're going to start with the male genitalia and I want to get you oriented as we're going to look at this model um, in multiple views. So we're starting with the anterior view. We'll look at the lateral, the medial view, and a posterior view. So at the top here, this circular organ is the bladder and it is sandwiched and embedded within the pelvic cavity. So this is the pelvis. This is the acetabulum where the head of the femur would be located. And we can see the femoral vein and the femoral artery. And we have the testicular artery which was initially identified as a gonadal artery. But here, now that we're being more specific in terms of male versus female, we are giving them designation. So it's testicular artery and testicular vein. Coming across the pelvis here at the pubic bone, we see this muscle, this is the rectus abdominis. And then extending from the um, internal abdominal oblique is this muscle right here, which is now called the cremaster muscle. So this extends through what is called the inguinal ring and continues on through the spermatocord and it covers the testis down at the scrotum. So this is a muscle that when it contracts is going to act on the testes in order to help regulate and maintain temperature. Also within the spermatic cord, we can see the testicular artery and it's surrounded by a network of veins called the pampiniforma plexus. Those veins draw heat from the testicular artery and carry that away from the testes in order to keep the testes at a lower temperature than body temperature. Those are then going to converge and become the testicular vein on its way back to the heart. So this structure then is called the spermatic cord. And so I've just named a couple of things that are located in there the pampiniform plexus, the testicular artery, the cremaster muscle, the testis, just down here at the bottom, and then all the structures that are going to be associated with the testis, like the epididymis. We also have lymphatics in here and nerve tissue in here as well. And we'll see an extension of the ductus deferens will also be down there as well. We have some tissue layers that we can also look at. So the spermatic cord is wrapped in a connective tissue called the tunica vaginalis. So it provides protection. And the testis itself is also surrounded by a fibrous connective tissue called the tunica albuginea. Our next structure is going to be the penis. This is the shaft of the penis and this is the glands, also called the head of the penis. We also have some muscles aside from our rectus abdominis muscle. This is the obturator um, external muscle. And then we have parts of the pelvic floor and the abdominal or uh, adductor muscles extending down here as well. Now we're having a look at the lateral view and we see the scrotum, the spermatic cord, the femoral vein and artery, the acetabulum, the obturator muscle, the abductor muscle, 
And again, you see the shaft and the glands. And this ring here is called the corona. Now we're looking at the posterior view. So again, we're looking at the pelvis. This is the acetabulum. This is an obturator internus muscle. You see the bladder. And on the posterior side of the bladder, we've got a couple of structures here that are going to be new. So we have seminal vesicles. We have the ampulla of the ductus deferens, which is this right here. This structure sticking up right here, this is the um, ureter of the bladder. So bladder, um, urine drains into the bladder through that. Again, but right adjacent to it, this is the ductus deferens and the seminal vesicle. Below that is the prostate gland. And below that is the rectum. And the rectum is surrounded by um, some muscle tissue. There are two sphincters, an internal ani um, sphincter muscle and the ani um, external or externus muscle. So both of those sphincter muscles um, help in preventing feces from being discharged without some conscious control. So having some forethought um, in releasing the bowels. Now we're still on the posterior side, but I wanted to zoom in just a little bit to identify some other structures here. So we have the pudendal nerve, the pudendal artery, and the pudendal vein. We also have um, muscles here. So I wanna point out, this is the internal sphincter for the anus. This is the external sphincter for the anus. And then we also have this muscle right here, which is a sphincter for the urethra. So this is um, the external um, urethral sphincter for the male. Okay, now we're having a look at the medial section of the male genitalia model. And we're gonna start up here at the top at the bladder. This is the storage organ for urine. Um, there are two urethral sphincters in the male. So we have an internal urethral sphincter, which will prevent um, urine from flowing into the urethra. The urethra, once that sphincter is open, um, is very long and allows for urine to flow out the urethral orifice at the glands or the head of the penis. As urine travels through here, it's gonna go through um, a, a gland. So this is the prostate gland here. And so the urethra gets a different name. It's the prostatic urethra. And then we have another sphincter. This is the external urethral sphincter right here. And so that also helps to regulate urine flow and so the urethra in this region then is called the membranous urethra. And then urine would enter into the penile urethra and out the orifice. So similar that there are three different regions of the urethra, there's also multiple regions of the penis. I've already named the head, also called the glands, the shaft, but we also have a root. So the root of the penis is here. So this whole structure is the root of the penis. And what surrounds that on the inferior side is a muscle. So that's called the bulbospongiosus muscle. And adjacent to that is a gland, a very small gland called the bulbourethral gland. So that is going to help 
um, lubricate and clean out the urethra as semen is making its way through the urethra during um, ejaculation. In the section of the penis where it's the shaft and the root, there are two different types of connective tissue here. So on the dorsal side, we have a connective tissue space called the corpus cavernosum. So that is body, bodies plural, and that tissue engorges with blood in order for an erection to take place. So up here, we can see the dorsal artery and the dorsal vein of the penis. This uh, connective tissue in here that engorges with blood during that erection is surrounded by another connective tissue called the tunica albuginea. And that allows for um, the penis to maintain its erect position. Down below, we have another connective tissue that surrounds the urethra. This is called the corpus spongiosum. And it is not surrounded by the tunica albuginea um, because this area needs to stay flexible, loose, flaccid, in order to maintain the opening of the urethra um, during ejaculation. So how does sperm get from the testis into the urethra and then ejaculated from the penis? Let's follow the route. So inside the testicle, inside this area, sperm would leave the testis via a tubule called the ductus deferens. And we can see the ductus deferens up here at the top. If I rotate this around, we see that the ductus deferens continues around and you have this ampulla and it meets with the seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicle releases fluid into the ductus deferens and then it becomes what is called the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct releases its substance into the prostatic urethra and then that continues along the rest of the urethra and out the orifice. The primary sex organ for the male is the testis. This is a model of the testis. And we're going to look at the structures um, that make up the testis and where sperm production takes place. So this is housed in the scrotum. Remember the testis is covered by a fibrous connective tissue called the tunica albuginea. And it is sectioned off into what are called lobules. So each of these segments is a lobule. The lobule is filled with uh, the seminiferous tubules. There are several of these in each of the lobules. And this is where sperm production takes place. So the hormones, testosterone, um, inhibin, um, androgen binding protein, um, the nurse cells, the intrastitial uh, cells, all of those structures would be found associated with um, the seminiferous tubules because that's where the sperm are going to develop and grow and begin their process of maturation. From the um, seminiferous tubule, 
our sperm would leave that space and enter into this interesting network, which is called the Reti testis. From there, they are entering into these ducts, which are called the efferent ductules. And then they are entering into the epididymis. So into the epididymis, this is the head of the epididymis, uh, the body going down to the tail, down here. And then this becomes the ductus deferens. And then the ductus deferens will transport the sperm up to the junction of uh, the seminal vesicle, which then becomes the ejaculatory duct leading to the urethra.